Hello, and welcome to this week's edition of Web of Light. I am here with my partner, Angie Dianju. <laughs> I'm Dr. Kevin. Uh, if you are joining us for the first time, please send us an email. We don't always get notified. I know that we currently have stations that go from Maine to California that are carrying us. We're getting new stations all the time. We don't always get notified. So send something to Dr. Kevin, uh, D-R-K-E-V-I-N, at webolite.com, and let us know if we're recently on your public access channel. And we will be more than happy to greet you and welcome you and make you part of the Web of Light family. So, with all that being said, how are you doing? We are doing pretty well. Are we? There we go. We've got some big events coming up. Yeah, we do. We've got Fire Fest. Fire Fest. Fire Fest, which is? July 1st. In? Pepperell, Mass. And Fire Fest is? Well, Fire Fest is... <laughs> <laughs> This is a celebration of the arts, and it's actually something that started off with um, Emerald, who used to be Amethyst, um, and we decided we would dedicate it out to the Pepperell community because they have their small town Big Bang, and they always re um, they raise money for the fireworks so they can keep fireworks celebration alive in their town. And I thought, what a great place, and they get this beautiful huge field and so it was like no, most definitely Firefest has to be there and Firefest will have two stages this this time around um, there'll be an acoustic and band stage and there'll also be a theatrical stage uh, so there'll be performances and demonstrations on one stage the other stage is going to have band and and all, all kinds of fun music um, singers we have anything from choir singers to I think country singers uh, it's a vast variety plus Oh, uh, plus. Well, plus, yes. Plus. plus we plus. have Go these ahead. beautiful vendors that are actual crafters and artists from throughout the New England area who will be joining us as well. And so you'll see all their handicrafts and their beautiful jewelry and their beautiful woodwork or whatever it is that they might have on display. Uh, and then there's another plus. And we're also going to have, there's going to be climbing walls, and yes. there's going to be dunking pools, and there's going to be a little train ride for the, for the little kids. There's going to be cornhole. There's going to be face painters. Don't forget the little racing cars. And the little racing cars. Woo-wee! Uh, it's an event that's going to start at 11 in the morning. You're going to see the 4th of July fire, uh, the 4th of July parade will go right by where the field is. Yeah. And then it goes till 9.30 at night, where you can stay right there and watch the fireworks. Yeah. And of course, you know, uh, Angie and I got behind this event because it's a small town that's keeping its history going, keeping yeah. its tradition going, that is making, you know, the people are making, truly making a decision what kind of town they want to be. So yeah. for 30 years, every year, they've raised the money so that they can still have fireworks in the park, yes. a Fourth of July celebration. Mm -hmm. And of course, the fact that July 4th is my birthday has nothing to do with why nothing I would support this cause. Not nothing at all. At all. <laughs> Not at all. Not at all. <laughs> But I will say that this, this whole celebration is something, and, and this is why I really appreciate a community like this, is they were bringing family spirit and keeping it together. Because this is fun for all. Yeah. It's not I, just, you know, a child or a family. It's actually fun for a regular adult who wants to just come out and maybe meet somebody that is special to them that they've never met before. You know, that doesn't mean you have to come out of family. You can come on your own and, hey, you may very well find some new friends. <laughs> And you may find somebody, so you come back with a family next year. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, who knows? <laughs> I'm just saying. Uh, historically, uh, the, this uh, 4th of July celebration has brought three to 4,000 people. We're putting it on steroids with Firefest, and the Web of Light Foundation is actually the event managers for it, i.e. Angie yeah. and I are going to go there. We're going to help them have a, a bigger, brighter event and raise more money to be able to help keep this tradition going. Mm -hmm. So that is uh, July 1st, Pepper Mass, from 11 in the morning till 9.30 at night. Yeah. So we hope to see you there. If you are a vendor, a craftsperson, if you are a musician, we've got musicians, we've got people coming from Rhode Island and Maine yeah. and Vermont and Connecticut. I mean, like, again, all over. I and think you don't even need to be a musician. If you do something like a dance or, or you do something like uh, maybe you like to show people a yoga stance or 
uh, you know, acrobatics. Hey, the if dance you're of the seven jungler, veils. You can be out there. Oh, <laughs> actually, yeah, I'm looking right now for some dancers of the seven veils. Uh, <laughs> belly dancers would be great. We've had them in the past, so why not? <laughs> Absolutely. So, anyways, so that's kind of what's going on. Um, so what else? So what have you been doing lately? Anything interesting? What's up? Well, just keep myself busy uh, looking and seeing what we have for creative people in the area. And every day I find some new ones. So it's kind of really fascinating to know that we have a very artistic community. And I know that you've been having your show going on. And uh, they, and I always I don't want to mess this up because there's so many words to this thing. It's, uh, dragons, unicorns, and other, and creative, other creatures. creative creatures, and I think that's a, such an awesome place. For if you have art, you do art, you do anything theatrical, um, check in and, and get on the show because it's it's wonderful to see these people that are out there. And I myself have started Awakening Moments up again, which, which I would have mentioned, but you didn't take a breath. Go nonprofit, ahead. <laughs> and it's all about the nonprofits. But I'm also uh, dedicating one or two. Um, times a month to actually uh, one one time a month that I'm actually doing an on 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 the show meditation for people to follow in their own privacy of their home, and another one I'm kind of um, examining certain pieces of maybe metaphysical or holistic that people aren't really too used to like you know like what is a pendulum or something to that effect so people can have a little bit of an understanding of different pieces. So it's, it's kind of like a little bit of each. Well, I heard this rumor that said that you were going to have somebody on your show that was going to talk about why ADD and ADHD was a gift. Is that mm, true? That's a true. That's not a rumor. Oh, yeah. Yes, Dr. Kevin will be joining me in the next few weeks. So. <laughs> because uh, that is a very big topic to me. And a lot of people don't understand. They hear the word. They kind of have an idea. But... They really don't know, and that's what my show is about, getting those truths out. So, yeah, so, uh, and dragons, unicorns, and other creative creatures, it's about artists of all kinds. If there's something that's artistic in your soul, in your passion, and you want to bring it to the world, and you're out there making a difference in the world to your creativity, then my co-host for that show is Rona Gostein. Um, you come mm -hmm. on, and we will have lots of fun. Yeah. And... Uh, We've got the band, one of the bands that's at the show, uh, going to be a fire fest, is going to be on Are our they show. coming on? Yeah, yeah. good. Um, so we're going to have a band awesome. and have some live music. Very nice. So one of the other things I've been keeping busy with is, oh. No good? <laughs> no good? Well, we have this beautiful place called the uh, Wolf's Healing Center. Yes. Which is now a part of my home, and uh, it's just been increasingly becoming more beautiful down there good, good so we're you know and we got the drumming circle coming and i think pretty soon it's going to be outside again because you know that's the weather the time of the year this, is coming this next drumming circle could be outside if could we got be. beautiful weather we'll yeah. light up the fire pit and yeah. do the outside drumming circle and we if you uh want to uh Go to Gathering in Spirit, either as a meetup group or as a uh, Facebook group, Gathering in Spirit. You can ask to join, um, mm -hmm. and you will be noticed. We do the f Friday that's closest to the full moon every uh, we, yeah. every month, and you do a new moon meditation every month as yes, well. Yes, I do. So we have a new moon meditation and a full moon drum. Yeah. So and we have plenty of other pieces that are coming together there. Um, you know, it's going to be a place where people will be able to come in. Um, you know, I have an empath class there. It's not really a class. It's just a gathering of people that feel a lot of, you know, I'm just kind of like tired of feeling the whole world. This is a place where you can come and just discuss and, and relax and release um, intuitive developments. We're going to be doing a beautiful class on that. Yep. I've got a psychic development class coming mm -hmm. in the fall. Mm -hmm. Where So we've got a number of classes, a number so of things. So many things going on. Yep. So now we're going to move on to our guest today. Um, today's guest is Holly Eden Morrow. Holly Eden Morrow nourishes the body and the soul. Her work has spanned several industries and continents and has changed hearts and lives. She grew up around the world, residing in Spain and France, both places that I've been. Immersion in a variety of cultures inspired her to follow her childhood dream of becoming a professional chef. Maybe we'll have her come on and do a cooking show on oh. dragons. 
spiritual cooking. I do that. Uh, attending the original Cordon Bleu Culinary School in Paris, France in 1948. <laughs> oh, is that my dyslexia kicking in? That must have been her past life. 1984, a woman, she rented, a woman she rented a room from in Paris informed her she was a natural healer. She returned to Connecticut eager to start cooking and after a few months headed out to San Diego. Her style of cooking was eclectic style of healthy world cuisines. 2001, she opened her catering company with her mother in mind, Eden Healthy. She was also certified as a Reiki master at this time to assist her son's ailment with colic which I'm hoping, you see, 19, uh, 2001, so I'm hoping he's over it by now. Uh, <laughs> and combining her love of cooking and her intuitive abilities, she helped open a holistic center for eating disorders and addictions to, in Del Mar. Initially hired as an executive chef, she was drawn to assist in the patient's healing. She continued her healing with patient, cancer patients in hospice care. Some of her intuitive studies have included several visits to the Arthur Finley College of Spiritualism, and the psychic studies in England. Holly's foray into the corporate world as a sales exec only reinforced what she's always felt, that helping and supporting her clients was her biggest joy. She stepped out of corporate sales to step into her passion, teaching intuitive workshops, giving soul guidance, healing, and connecting with people, their loved ones in spirit. Her intention is to help everyone find inspiration and fulfillment in their daily and business lives. Welcome, Miss Holly. How are you? I'm wonderful. Thank Sounds you. Sounds like you're a busy girl. Yeah. I, I always stay busy, not a dull moment. Mm. Well, we like that, not a dull moment. Uh, we have the same philosophy. Yeah. Uh, Imagine that. <laughs> I'm sure you can tell. <laughs> so at this point, you have been in full-time spiritual business for how long? Uh, well, my entire life, but for professionally, I'd say probably the last eight years. Okay, great, great. You know, there's a lot of people out there that are uh, have a gift, have a talent, and um, they feel like they're here to do something with it, but actually making a spiritual business work is a little beyond them. Um, and so if I want to start with if somebody is out there and they want to have a spiritual business, what piece of advice would you give to them? I think that no matter what you love, um, you have to go at it with passion and purpose. The idea is that if you, you want to do something in your life, and I, and I tell this to clients that are really looking for something or even looking for new direction, that um, when it involves uh, work, you know, making it life work, that no matter if you're not going to make any money at it, that's where you have to get out of your own financial way and just look at what will drive you to passion and purpose, what you really honestly want to want to do with what you love, because the money will follow. It's a spirit will provide. They want you happy upstairs. <laughs> um, and they also have a very good sense of humor because um, most people don't say how much money they want to make. So uh, that's also very important in the intention business because intention <laughs> is energetic, right? Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, um, I always think they want us happy upstairs. They want us happy downstairs. So I'm happy to be happy with all of them. Uh, <laughs> So you have, what would you say, I mean, we, we read through the bio, um, uh, or the abbreviated bio. Yeah. <laughs> Could you imagine if I'd read the whole thing, right? <laughs> You'd be like, oh yeah, it shows up. <laughs> <laughs> There's a little more in there. A little more. So um, what would you say the primary focus of your business at this point? If there was, if you could list a single primary focus, what would it be? Um, I... That's really a good question. Thanks. Um, <laughs> thanks. You probably used that before. Now, um, Not I, really. I, <laughs> I, I would just say uh, channeling. Channeling is mostly where I go, um, whether it be in my paintings, um, just my connection to creating stuff, and to sharing information with people. So um, that's I'd say channeling is probably my biggest focus. So we have a, a, a table full of uh, examples of your work, play toys, <laughs> all sorts of things. We have this. Spiritual toys. Let's just say that. Spiritual toys. <laughs> toys. 
I, so, so, you know, we could abbreviate it to S toys. Well, maybe that wouldn't work. Uh, <laughs> uh, this is, now, did you paint these pictures? Uh, I have the original prints at home, um, and they were created for the outline of the CD that we have there on the table, just because I really wanted to denote each one of the uh, meditations that I had on the CD. That's a smaller set. If you can't get all that on there, so I'm just um, just pulling that up. I kind of use that for more of the office space or or your altar, just so you have it. Am I open this? Yeah, please feel free. They're all yours, by the oh. way. <laughs> okay. So, uh, so I hope that you take yours back to your Wolf Center and use them in your space. Or mm -hmm. so now, uh, so these are laminated, so you could. Uh, those quality. are yeah, those are picture quality. These are UV protected and um, and a little bit more. So I'm gonna have the camera just come in for a second. That's the that is crown. the the crown chakra. Crown chakra. Okay, this is a quiz, that, and this <laughs> is third can, eye. That's the throat chakra. Okay. And each one, just just to uh, let you know that each one of these I've kind of symboled in the direction because I wanted to make it a teaching tool as well so people will always be learning. But as you can see, how important it is to speak from the higher heart. So the pink always represents the uh -huh. higher heart. Yep. So between the throat and the heart. And you can see there's a little, what would you call that, a colon or a semi, you know, um, yep. apostrophe kind of. Up there denotes the denotes a quotation for the throat. Here we have the fire for the chi and the creativity and the emotion, and the foundation is the square that is the sun or the you know the strength. Mm -hmm. So um, each one of them, I kind of when I channeled these different pieces was um, really to bring the energy up in the color as well. So and all these pieces that you're seeing is um, they they depict the chakras, our energy ports that are through our entire body. So just so people that are not aware of the chakras are that this is what we're we're looking at here. It's very near and dear to my heart. Um, I actually had them tattooed about eleven years ago, and um, that is when I exploded in color. So I actually <laughs> see another dimension of color outside mm -hmm. of this. Yeah, and that's part of my creative process. Well, I don't, I don't see the tattoo on your third eye. <laughs> yeah. Where's the tattoo on your throat? I got Oops. smart. They're on the back. Oh, okay. <laughs> Not, and I won't be showing you any of those today. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So what I'm going to do, so first of all, I want to talk about this mug for a second. She gave us this lovely mug. It says, I am on it. Um, and this is something that you also put together, correct? That is correct. Okay. I love uh, that mug. Yeah, I know. And so I'm actually, I want to take a second and read a couple of these. I am creative, radiant, fulfilled, abundant, generous, focused, healthy, inspired, thoughtful, responsible, positive, mindful, sensitive, vibrant, energetic, perfect me. I skipped several of the words. I would use the whole show to read them all. Um, uh, but definitely. Now, are you familiar with uh, uh, Moto's work? Yes. Yes. Yes, of course, with the water. The water. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So I believe, because my, my whole kind of idea of things is intentional and um, energy, um, we can show you what energy looks like with the power of intention because um, thoughts and words carry, carry energy. And so when I did that, I thought my intention when I imbued those words on the cup was that everybody is going to be drinking that energy through their um, whatever they're drinking for the day and then I also thought that this maybe one word stands out at you when you grab your cup in the morning and maybe that was the focus that you needed to start your day with so you can also use that as a meditation piece I mm -hmm. would think yeah this is great that's the yeah. piece I love with these cups um, because as you pick these up I don't know if anybody ever looked at a book and sometimes it's like one word comes out of you out of the whole entire paragraph but that's how I feel about this cup. It's like I looked at it before, and it was, um, I must have been on the other side. I'm trying to remember which one it was that came to me. Um, and no, it was ambitious. And couldn't see. There was one that came to me, and see, now it's not coming to me. <laughs> oh, appreciated. That was the word. Appreciated, appreciated came to me. And I thought to myself, how beautiful that is to have your tea or your coffee and just give thought to how much you are appreciated. 
period, put in positive thoughts of how am I appreciated because everybody is appreciated in some way. And any of these words on here, you can, you know, bring that. And I think that we need that. Thank you. People need to be positive and it brings their energy to a higher port when they think positive. Well, I agree with that. Yeah, and it says I am on it. And of course, yeah. me, I always fits, fits with stuff. So I also would say if the word that stayed out to me, I am enlightened, stood out to me. I'm enlightened. That I would, I would do, uh, I would do some on meditating on I'm enlightened and how I'm enlightened. Um, but I would also myself do the second part of, and now, how can I enlighten others? How can I bring joy mm -hmm. to others? How yes. can I, so that it's just, so if this is me, how do I help others do it as well? So it's the ebb and flow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? It's the give and take. Mm -hmm. It's the, definitely. Um, I, just, to, just to add on the end, I thought it was like when I wrote this and added all those words, I really thought it was important to make the last word perfect and me because it doesn't matter who oh. you are. The divine thinks we're all perfect, right? So um, whatever you're needing for the day, I hope you find that and that fulfillment mm -hmm. of drinking it up in that cup, right? Well, I'm always telling um, clients or students when I'm doing it is the one thing you can never fail at is being you if you'll just be 100% you. And then mm -hmm. it is always perfect. Absolutely. Because that's the only thing that can be perfect. Yeah. And, and perfect is an ongoing, ever shifting and changing. You can only be less than perfect when you're trying to be other than you. So, perfect. The perfect. <laughs> perfect. Perfect. <laughs> so, so go around the table. Whatever you're drawn to, we're going to talk about and talk a little bit about this. And so, how so, so? One other question before that: How supportive are the people in your life of you being a woo woo wacko person? I think I have <laughs> a, a lot of different types of support in my life. Okay. I would have to say that the people who don't probably appreciate my gifts the most are my family, unfortunately, because I think it's a little too woo for them. I think they probably wish I was still the executive chef and had uh, continued doing that. But I, I'm always cooking, so I'm still always in that part of my joy. I don't have Me to too. worry about it. Yeah. But uh, there was a greater calling for all of this. I couldn't shut that door on it. And um, when the light switch flickered, I mean, and I mean on, there was no turning it off because the switch broke after that. Yeah. So <laughs> I had to honor and, and I've done it. So. Yeah. Well, you know, say, hey, you know, you loved that I was such a fabulous cook for the body. Now I'm just a cook for the soul. Get over it. I agree. <laughs> I totally agree with well, that. Well, you know, it's... I feel that, like, when I was listening to and I read before uh, the information about cooking, it, and I, I honor that. It's awesome that you went into that whole entire piece. But that cooking piece of it was also uh, keeping in mind the community. It was also a spiritual piece. Absolutely. Because you were bringing people to honor themselves with you know, the, not just your, um, you know, little burgers from the sidekick, but actual nutritional food. And, and so you really haven't taken a big leap. I feel you've just changed, shifted a little. I agree with that wholeheartedly, Angie. Um, I, what I would say is um, I've always been creating memories for people through food. And, um, and, and celebrating whether it's a wedding or even yeah. somebody's passing. I was always there doing that and, and loved it, um, loved every part of it. Um, mm -hmm. But I'm just doing that on a different level, so I mm -hmm. totally agree with that. Yeah. So here's an idea for you, because this is what yes. I do. I, I just always do it. So I, I, so I think you, boom, I think you should do a, a chakra cookbook for the soul. You do recipes that feed each of the chakras. So one of your chakras is out of, bal out of balance. You could have recipes for each of the chakras to say, okay, I'm feeling not really grounded. So here's some, here are the, here are the, you know. Some rooted these, vegetables some, or some, some rooted, meat. Vegetables. Some root chakras. Here's some recipes for when you need to ground. And yeah. here's some recipes for you. I, there you go. 
Oh, would that be fabulous? Ab absolutely. absolutely. Those have, believe me, they've all been in my line of uh, how many <laughs> books I have to create, and so what have I done? Created none because there's so many in the so many in the head. So, yeah, I I mean I've written tons and tons of um, of recipes, and I just never felt the need to really compile or anything after 29 years of being in the business, but. Um, yeah, I'm not even drawn to like watching cooking shows or or any of the paranormal stuff. None of that stuff even does anything for me as far as watching stuff that's in my wheelhouse, which is kind of weird. I do the same thing with reading. I love to read, and I, I won't read. I won't read a spiritual book very rarely. I'll pick one up and open it up and go, oh, okay, yeah, thanks, and then that's it, and put it yeah. back on the shelf at Barnes and Noble, <laughs> and then I go and do my my reading of choice. <laughs> Right. I, I just, I, to, uh, for me, it's, it's, I do read some on occasion and, and I would, I would recommend to you my, the last book that I wrote, uh, read was Michael Singer's, um, Surrender Experiment, which was really interesting. And I I can't tell you anything about it. His first book was really good about his yoga stuff, but the second one kind of took all his compilation of where he went. And that was only a couple of years old, I think, but it was, really interesting and in, in how he led a spiritual life, but how his spiritual life made him into something so much bigger and holy moly, it's unbelievable. It, it's something, to, it's just something to look and, it, and you'd appreciate it because of how he, he spun it. Ah. I don't want to give any more. Okay. See, I yeah. Actually, the only one that I really get into as far as spiritual books is I will read up with Brian Wise because that's part of my whole. Love him. I love looking into more i'm intrigued more into the past life because i work with the past life stuff but that it's because of it's him you know what we've never done we've never done past life work on each other because we both do past life work but anyways that's another show uh, <laughs> so sh so share some of your play toys just decide what you want to talk about pick it up and let's 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 okay, go okay so so because we're going to start with a toy um, we'll just, like I said, everything is intentional and energetic, so we'll just go with that right off the bat. Um, simple dowsing rods. You can actually make these with coat hangers. These are not. Mm -hmm. um, the idea, if you're going to make them from scratch, you need straws uh, and, and regular wire hangers. But um, I purchased these from the, uh, uh, the, the local whatever at the expo and the community for the dowsers is in New England, something or other. Yeah. Um, so a shout out to them, even though I'll never get their name right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, the power of intention. As, I'm gonna stand up if that's okay. Yep. yep. And just um, as we look at that, um, it's like yes or just love just opens up that portal. So this is really a door, right? And as I start thinking the opposite, I always go the other way, right? Just because of the negative. I don't even have to say, like, think horrible things in my head. All I have to do is say, it's not love. And then it just sh shuts down. So when we're in our passion and purpose, that's where we flow from. That's the intention space right there. And um, the energy will tell you that you're in the right direction because it's constantly flowing. Look, my door is right open as right I say open. that. So, um, yeah, anyway, I have to kind of get away from myself a little bit. All right. Oh, Bring don't we back. all sometimes? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in my own way, right? So, so anyway, it, it just gives you an idea of where we are and where people put their energy is usually in the wrong place. Now, you know? would you use those on somebody else for something? Um, generally, I just use them for that, just to show energy. Okay. Um, although you could you could use these to show, show an auric field. Um, I have a couple of other things here. And... This one, I can't tell you what the exact name of this one is, but I do know that it's a um, chakra, like it'll tell you whether the chakras are open or closed. So if I start, right, if I start from the base chakra, it stop. and what it'll do is it'll let you know if it's open, and it's starting to open up, right? And then when it's had enough of the spin, and you can see it's starting already, and then, it go, then I'll move up to the next one. And now we know the sacral's going. Right. Ah, there's a little bit in the power. There we go. So if I were going to let you 
um, look at like wanting to shift that through some of my affirmation on the meditation, that's where I would probably start with you is just a little bit on the power. Would be a good spot. Your heart is wide open. Wide open. <laughs> no doubt. Look at how big that yeah. one is. Isn't that beautiful? All right. And so we're going to go to the throat and slow that down. Yeah, there's no problems with your throat chakra. <laughs> so I'm just guessing that like your energy levels, you're probably a little tired, you know, in your energy, and that's probably why you need a little more power. Of course, your 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 um, a third eye is uh, certainly active, mm. so that's not a problem either. And I always, it's a little. I already know you're open through here because you're connected, but having to make you lean over for that is really not going to be necessary. But we know. See, it go, it automatically goes. Yeah. So, perfect. Yeah. So if I were to say which one is probably your lightest, it would just be your your solar plexus at that point. Um, then we have the Cameron aura meter, which gauges uh, where your chakra, um, not just where your chakras are moving, but how your auric field is. So um, let me see if I can do this, because yours might be quite yeah. more open yeah. than um, I can actually show. So I'm just going to be mindful of that while you unleash me. There you go. <laughs> you can go back further okay, now. Okay, yeah, because I just, in case I can't come forward, I want to be really mindful. <laughs> There you go. Um, shall no, I, shall I transport my dog with me? Is that the way it's going to yeah. work? <laughs> all right. All right. So um, if I'm walking, you're you're already so open, I can't even get this. I'll probably have to walk off the stage, honestly. <laughs> so um, I don't ah, think that ah. this is a good example of me <laughs> showing this. But let me just say that um, typically when you have someone who's auric field, the average person is 12 to 18 inches. When you're openly active in your spirit space, it tends to move the auric field really much further out. So um, this is like, there's no point, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So um, what I can do, maybe I can do this, is hold up this set of chakras right there. I might be able to, it's still, I don't know. Like, I wonder if the smaller set would just help you, and I only say that because it's smaller, but they still have a vibration. So. They see? Yep. It's not, it's, it's interesting because <laughs> yep. I can't, going I right can't off do camera. anything, <laughs> right? I can't do it. It's as far as I'm going to be able to go with those too. Yep. And you're still in that, in that field too. Yep. So I can't really direct it. Okay. So, bad example. Sorry. Bad example today. For no that, cookie. But... No cookie for Dr. Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> My oryx too blown and, out. Yeah, I'm sorry you're, you've got way too much energy <laughs> for our camera or our meter to read you in the stage space. Okay, so what else do you have um, there? Wait a second, I'm going to let you I'm gonna thank take you. this. Yep, thank you. go ahead. You're um, fine. So what, what else we have here is... Um, this is called the Pythagorean Tone Generator, and I generally start my meditations off with this because I like to have the tones cleared before. When I'm with people privately in a session, I do this, and with my clear audience, I'm able to hear the imbalances um, between the body. And um, you are so, you both are very familiar with how this works, but the right side of the body is, is the male and the left side is female. So I just kind of look at my wheelhouse and this is passion and purpose at my shoulders and that's how I read people. So this right side is our masculine business side, if you were, although I find a lot of women show up on this side because of their independence and having to work. And when you find um, uh, the personal and nurturing side, the, this, this, is, um, this is the lighter side of where we're working from when we're working in our, um, our nurturing, healing spirit, right? So um, the times that I'll see gentlemen on this side more aptly is when they're in their balanced divine goddess and masculine energy. And you know that when you're in this kind of thing, you get a harem of women in comparison <laughs> to the other way around. So, so I always would tell clients if they show up, I go, your best space for meeting women is probably at some of these, you know, um, spiritual events because your ratio is going to be like one in 30. <laughs> so you've got a better opportunity to meet people. Um, so, so what happens here is 
because of the clear audiences I met, and probably because of my Piscean um, nature, I am able to hear the reverb of the tones go through your body. I then receive them through mine, and I can hear it in my ear. And it, there's no way I can teach something like that because I can't hear what you hear. But there's a decibel, an audio, uh, a definite audio, um, audible decibel um, that I can hear within it. So uh, if it's running, it'll tell me whether it's running low, like, like your chakras. I could read those by hitting these tones. I I'm not sure how I can do it in this space. It may just be too much because I also have Angie and other people here. But um, generally what I would do, and I'm going to turn this around if that's okay. No, okay. turn it around. We want right. to see it. Yeah. So um, when we start, the, and, and I put the stones up here just so you could see it, but um, what I do is I start with the root chakra and I'm just going to, um, if you want to close your eyes and I'm just going to let you feel what it's like to be in that energy and the idea is I really like to have people really aware of what's going on in their bodies because when they're breathing and you hit the tones, you might strike a chord, especially if you have issues with finances and family you would feel that located at the root chakra. Okay. So, um, so it goes all the way up, and that's how I, I'm always kind of teaching, so people will be connected to the color, will be connected to the affirmations, mm -hmm. and, and there are affirmations on the CD so that those would draw to you something that you're more inclined to kind of connect with in case you're missing something in that um, energy. Yeah. And this is, uh, she's talking about essential healing, sacred chakra meditations. I don't know if we can get a little little thing. That's the CD she's referring to. That tree was in my yard too, so I wanted to honor that beautiful oh. tree. Oh my, it is a beautiful tree. Yeah. And the music is 432 Hertz. I'm not sure if you're familiar yep. with that, but um, Brian T. Collins is one of the foremost, like, people on that particular pitch and um, and he did the music for the okay. CD. So you want to so close your so you're going to play yes, a note? Yes, please. Okay. So, um, yeah, so it's just really being aware of your body because I want you to feel it. Okay, so just taking some nice cleansing breaths as I strike that chord. That's the root chakra. Red. Releasing any problems around finances or family. Feeling rooted and supported. And then you would take a nice cleansing breath. And then we'd move up, move up to the sacral chakra, right? Removing any blocks around emotion. This is the creative center, divine inspiration, co-creation, your God and goddess energy. It's a beautiful balance. And another breath as you move to the solar plexus. And that's your strength, your courage, purpose. And it's yellow. So when you're needing more energy or you feel like somebody's punched you in the gut, that's where you're going to feel it, right? And then another breath as we move up to the heart chakra. And this space is for love and compassion, passion, and forgiveness. So if you're stuck there, you'd feel a little tightness. And then you would release it through breath and then move up to the throat chakra. And this is blue. It's about authentic truth, speaking your truth, it's expression. And then blue and color is about healing as well. And removing any blocks on speaking as we move up to the third eye. And that's that beautiful indigo blank canvas that you find behind your brows that releases impressions, images, symbols, and color so that you can connect with your spirits and guides. 
And then we move that up to the crown chakra, which can be violet and white, sometimes a myriad of colors. It really just depends on how you connect to your divine, but that is consciousness, awareness, and your connection with your, with your divine. And then we move to the soul. And that really is the I am connection right there. Uh, sometimes that's a golden thread, and as I mentioned, and uh, it could be a myriad of colors as well. And taking a nice cleansing breath in, feeling more present in your bodies, in the room. Makes me feel all sparkly. So, how was it for you? <laughs> that was very nice, but it was funny because it was the yellow chakra that I felt it at. Interesting. How about you? Did you have any of the... Where I felt it was constricted or yeah, anything? Yeah, at all. Maybe you didn't have any because we mm -hmm. just opened up all your stuff. Yeah. No, I didn't feel constricted anywhere. I mean, it, it was kind of like, yup, yup, yup. Mm -hmm. Yep. The only message I got was from the was a brief mellow message from the yellow, uh, from the, the power chakra, reminding me that I power down when I'm not eating often enough. Interesting. Okay. So, I was like, oh, okay, yeah, that's why the that's why that one was doing a little, a little bit. Yeah, I didn't grab my snack before the show. So. <laughs> <laughs> Note to self. <laughs> Note to self. Get the dates and the almonds out. And, <laughs> yeah, <right>. <laughs> <laughs> and those are good, healthy choices, so I like that. Yeah, yeah, well, you right? know, I have to pretend at least. <laughs> so you do this as part of a meditation healing session that you'll do for somebody? Uh, a couple things, yeah. I actually do this individually before I start readings just to clear people. So that gives them the advantage of that. Um, as I mentioned, I'm able to see. Um, I can start here. And I will tell, it, it tells me, and I actually have, um, a, like I have to write it all down because I'm constantly channeling, but I have notebooks of all, all the different ways that the energy comes up. And I started as like, it's just like an, it's not an X, you know, not like this, but like that. Um, so I wouldn't call it a cross because that would be too long, but it's like a square. So I denote it as a certain note. Um, so when it starts the, the root, I can tell where it's like where the strength starts. Yep. And um, it'll tell me when I strike that chord um, because the bar drops or raises in my ear and it'll tell me that we've had issues that were related a um, long time ago in the family. And then it'll go right or left, which will tell me whether it's to dad or mom. And so it'll also let me know where those energies are going currently today. And then I'll move up and I can tell whether it's relationship oriented or maybe you're stifled in your creativity because that's that's a hot spot right mm -hmm. there, as we know, right? Yeah. We've oh, got a yeah. lot of creative energy there, um, co-creative energy. And then um, uh, when I see that your power is low, it'll, it's how it'll affect, but I'll also get within my own body, I may feel something here, and then it may hit my heart. And then so I know that there's something related to a certain, you know, so I'm able to kind of scratch off. And I'll, you know, the next time I see you, I'll bring a notebook just to show you how that looks. Um, because otherwise, it's just a little silly for me to tell you. Um, these will also, um, uh, it's interesting because when I get to the um, crown chakra, the crown chakra relates to me, their faith and how they were raised as kids. So I can see staunch Catholic comes up and it's it's interesting but it that's the way it comes up and then it then I say but and there, there might just be a little note that I put next to it and it said but spirit kind of stepped in their way or that they had a they had a remarkable experience as a child that showed up but it'll show up in my hearing through this through this I can hear it all it's talking to me all the time so now, I'm, now you said because it's two of us on the stage, and as a stage you weren't going to get any loop feedback from either one of us, correct? Well, and both of you had the, the solar plexus issue. Yeah. You both yeah. had it. So you both heard it through there. 
Okay. Right? Yeah. So, um, so now, what can you describe? Now, if you like did that sound thing on my, you, you said the crown chakra to mm -hmm. find out about the religion you were raised in or something like this. So, can you tell me what is the sound of hedonism? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I've never used that one before. <laughs> I've never gone there. Just I, wondered. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 I want to know when you're doing this, um, do you ever do this like at a, um, like an expo or yeah, um, you do, actually, right? Actually, yeah. Um, I'm but are they laying down? No, um, I see. I I prefer that people aren't in that shavasana state mm -hmm. when you're doing this because we really should be sitting and posturing mm -hmm. to receive all that really clear. That's how I feel. Um, although I did have somebody do that, um, go into shavasana while doing these at an event I did um, the other night. And traditionally, what I'll do, um, and I, I may be doing it at the um, Natural Living Expo, and maybe if you had a speaker space at one of your events, that I can show you. Because not only do I, I open and clear with this, then I go into my power-up meditation, which is a very powerful technique in order to ground and raise. I, I kind of look at it as a fireman's pull to give you a deeper grounding and a um, higher connection. Um, and it takes a lot less time, but it's like the perfect way to do a mini, like power up as I call it, or you can take it into your me meditation with you, which will really raise your vibration. So I start with this. I then teach people my power up technique. And in that power up technique, I am also opening up my chi and I pass my chi energy on. So people will feel all sorts of different stuff, but it really does um, reactivate because we have this amazing pilot mm -hmm. light that usually gets dim around four or five you know, years of age um, because that's, that's the rule. Once we hit the matrix and time starts, then we all kind of turn off unless you know, you've been lucky enough to have somebody who's who's passed, like my mother passed when I was very young, and kept that door open for me. Mm -hmm. um, but but I still held off all of that intuitive aspects. I mean, I, I had it all along. I just I was really kind of keeping that door shut. But a lot of people are needing to reactivate this energy now, mm -hmm. or they feel lost. And I find that activating that really gives them that push to keep moving forward. And yeah. um, it's so powerful. Um, to just be able to do that. But, but what, what I've learned is um, that the type of chi work that I do is more spiritual chi. And when, it, when I've been around the globe teaching um, this stuff, that um, we had people in Hong Kong that equated like the one day, it used to be a two day workshop, but I do it only in one day. It's like the power of the chi activation is equivalent to like 10 years of qigong. So it's um. like, I don't know where other than they they give me this I'm able to push it out and ignite and it just what I find has transpired from me working with the blue energy is I am so creative like I've always been a creative individual but I can't stop and the chi energy is not just you know, this is creative energy, this is sexual energy, this is divine inspiration. And where you're not using one aspect, and each one of those aspects is very large, that you mm -hmm. need to transmute it. So I am constantly having to channel some sort of form, or I'm really off balance. So what happens is I just create products, um, working with people to, you know, keep raising the vibration, whatever it is, or writing or doing something. But we have to find an outlet for it. See, now, nice. we've got a couple other things I want to make sure that we look at on the table. Uh, but see, all I can think of is, okay, I want you to just take that, put it against my back, and then play it as it's against my back. <laughs> that's, that's actually a great idea, and we could do that, too. Yeah, yeah. So I would say that it's probably best to do it on a table, yeah. right? But I would, I would be happy to do that, probably not here in studio so much, but in a... In a private session at the Wolf yeah. Center. Right? <laughs> I just, you know, just, just because I was thinking, now, could I make a bed out of this and put those th things in? So you're laying on the bed and then you do that and then you turn around and then you do the other side. And I was like, I could just lay it up against my back or I could just hold it on my front and you could just kind of play it and I go. What, have you well, ever had a didgeridoo <laughs> put through the back? Yeah. I mean, so you understand with yeah. drumming and all these things, the, the tones are so, mm -hmm. so yeah. perfect. Brian created, um, 
I'm not sure what the 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 instrument is. Uh, Theracord. It's called the Theracord, Theracord, and he puts it on the body. He's not anywhere in the United States, so it doesn't okay. matter. I'm just mentioning it yeah. because he created yeah. this piece, no, no. Oh, and it's this, energetic. What this piece reminded me of actually were um, um, gong sessions. Thank yep. you. That's it's easier than carrying all my yeah. balls, right? So yeah. I don't have to do that. But this is delicate. I've had it for a long time. But when you talk about putting in your back or putting in the front, um, this is like the equation of having different sized gongs. Absolutely. And when they do the gong work, you stand in front of the gong. Yeah. No, I've done. Yeah, I've had that. So before. it's that same. Yeah. Feeling. It's good. It vibrations that we're all vibration. We're all energy. Absolutely. So, um, well, you know, what we should do is at some point set up for you to come teach something at the Wolf sure. Healing Center. Absolutely. But in a, in, in a preface of that, you should come to one of the drumming circles we do. Bring this, because all instruments are welcome. Do that. Have people experience it, experience it a little bit at yeah. the drumming circle and the drumming and feel it, feel its power. Absolutely. So we've got, we've only got about three minutes left. So this time always goes so fast. This is the painting that you did. Oh no, that's not at all related to any of the, I create the sacred numerology mandalas. Okay. And they are for individuals and it takes me about 10 to 14 hours to paint that. And I channel complete meditations and messages that I record for individuals for that. Okay. So this would be a product of a session that you did then? Uh, without the person being present. They're usually just gifts. But that is a gentleman that I painted right there. Okay. So with all the color, you wouldn't imagine that that's a man. But it is a man. Mm. Oh, see, I would. I, I, I'm, <laughs> well, yeah, that's I have no that balance. That. You yeah. see, <laughs> that is the balance. Yeah. But, uh, but it's, it's balanced and it's colorful, but there's as many angles and points as there are circles and rounds. Yeah. So the, he keeps his feminine energy underneath. There's, you've got some good, there's some good information in there. Yeah. Um, and it's all done by numerology. So, um, numerology, really? <laughs> yeah. So I do color and numerology are all based through the name and that's how I do it. Your name makes I, that. I work numerology. I am a numerologist. <laughs> so teaches. That's pretty interesting. So Blue Eden, now life in balance. And you said that this is a... It's a clearing spray. So, um, every, you know, when you're around a lot of people in this business, there are a lot of, um, I don't want to say, they're <laughs> Klingons. Right? There can be some, uh, we attract. I call them psychic vampires. I would energy say that. I was going to say that too, but we have to imagine ourselves as lights and there's like little moths to the flame. And I've, I've been told that that keeps bugs away, but um, in, from people in Singapore. So they're really glad to use that. Um, this helps people. Uh, sleep better at night if you put it on your pillow. It clears your energy field. Um, it's predominantly sage and lemon, um, and I created it because my spirit guide wanted me to make a smudge, but I wanted to travel, and I knew I couldn't burn sage on a plane, so that was the be next best thing. May I? Please, go ahead. You might want to shake it a few times before. I did. I've okay. been here shaking it. Here. Let mm -hmm. you. There. I'm not in her eyes. The next, the, the, <laughs> The negativity is it's going over to go over her <laughs> chakra. But there we go. The, ne the, negativity, the negativity is <laughs> gone. Look, you just lost 50 pounds. No. <laughs> she didn't need it to start with. <laughs> We'd have to use it every day. <laughs> OK. But so. I wear that. I wear that. And people, I have it in roll on too. So I have people um, all over the planet that buy it because they really love it. And um, it's just a very clearing and calm, calming. But there's a lot more energy in there. There's waters gathered from around the world. There were beautiful little um, blue energetic processes done. 22 people in a pyramid in Mount Shasta are in that bottle. I mean, I have yep. all sorts of little energies yeah. in there. Yeah, I've played at Mount Shasta. So, and I love this, the peacock. But we're going to have to wrap this up. We're almost out of time. Uh, this is Holly Eden Morrow. Uh, and you are out of, do you have a location? Um, the planet. I the can planet. Be, <laughs> I'm available on Skype, on phone, or at but my I'm home. Just, you're from Ma Massachusetts? I, I reside in Hopkinton, Mass. Okay, so. great. 
So thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Thank you kindly. It's beautiful to have you thank here. Thank you, Angie. Holly. I know I'll see you both again. Oh, yep. Yes. Yeah. So as we're getting ready to wind up this web of light, um, you have lots of support and help that's out there waiting for you if you choose to choose it. We've given you some ideas, insights, and thoughts today of support that awaits your willingness to accept it. Namaste. Thank you.